Oh, can I start? Lots of camping, lots of being outdoors, getting lots of exercise. I have a massive challenge to go and prepare for and then do. I love mountain biking and I love adventure. As a person, I quite like big challenges, so to sort of bring all these things together, they're the main reasons, I think. <laughs> For both of us, the aim of the trip was not to cycle on the road. It's much more fun, basically, because you, you're thinking about the surface and about the physical acts of cycling. You've got a map of Mongolia, and half of the stuff on it doesn't exist, and half of what you do find isn't on it. Basically the worst part of the bike trip is getting out of a big city. <coughs> Through all the traffic and fumes in industrial areas. What do you think, Andy? Uh, yeah, I really want to get out of the city as quickly as possible. I was just saying to Andy that it looks quite a, little, quite a bit like uh, the Scottish Highlands around here. And I'm sure I'm not the first person who said that. This is, this is a really, really beautiful place to camp. The landscape has become more free feeling and more basically wild. The road's just a track now. It's really good to be out here now. It, it looks really alien and foreign and brilliant and gorgeous. And obviously it's, 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 uh, it's somebody's home where we are right now, where we've put our tents and got our camp set up and stuff. It's a piece of land which somebody uses for their livelihood and it's obviously really important to remember and respect that while we're doing what we're doing. Tea, mate. I don't suppose people out here see that many guys riding bikes across their country from the other side of the planet. So, yeah, let's, let's hope it continues to go really, really well. This is a pretty tough, uh, this is a pretty steep climb, and the road's not particularly uh, uh, smooth, I guess you could say. It's very rocky and pretty steep. A bicycle is su such a slow way to travel. I mean, I walked up some of that climb and um, I was pretty much going practically the same speed as Tom was going up there and he was pedalling. It is frustrating at times going that slowly. Um, I think it, it's like a humbling process somehow. Like um, it's, a, it's quite a sort of centering process to go slowly. And I guess it's sort of, I, I suppose you might say meditative. It's so nice just to have all this time to forget about the silly little stuff that occupies life when you're back home. It's so good to kind of just get things in perspective. It is a very, very massive kind of place to be in. Like the, the scale of the landscape just completely dominates your uh, your experience. There's not a lot of people, but they are so well uh, kind of dispersed in the countryside that you never seem to be far away from anyone.
is the purpose of staying in a hotel like this? Mainly I'm really interested in wallpaper because uh, I'm a wallpaper designer by trade. And I come to these sort of places and I get, I get ideas. <laughs> if you look around me, there's at least five different patterns in this room. You have one on here. It's a kind of faded beige. Got one on here. It's like South American Inca. Here you've got Victorian England. Here, Edwardian England. A wonderful kind of faux Art Nouveau crit on the glass. This is the uh, minimal postmodern. As you see here, it's very simple. It's just a square. It's beautiful. <laughs> Welcome to Bulgan. Seems to be a kind of Mongolian character trait. Ignore foreigners. Hello. I'd like to know why though, I really would like to know why, because they're not, they're not ignoring us in a kind of nasty way, just in a kind of we don't exist kind of way. This is it, this is Bulgan. This is the main street with all the stuff on it. Park over there, hotel over there, mountains all around. That's it. I guess it's just a roadside shrine, but it's a bit funny to find it so far away from any kind of major route, because we, we're quite a long way off any major route right now. The track is very faint. It's a bit like a farm track somewhere in Dartmoor or something like that. I don't know, it's, it's not really that pretty. It's like, it's like there's just a load of vodka bottles here. It's like a pile of rubbish, but it's like a token of sort of saying, this is not just wilderness, this is where humans get, come through as well. Because it is a bit daunting, because we're just in the middle of this like forest and we haven't seen anybody for ages. The other night this guy came over to our tent and uh, made jokes about wolves eating us in the night. Then during the night I heard wolves howling. Well, if anything does happen in the night, you can be damn sure we're going to be filming it. Even if it's our own deaths, we're going to be there with the cameras. You're going to see it all happening, live. We're hoping the fire is going to keep away the bad things. And now we know how cavemen invented music. I don't know how they invented techno though, that was just this. Just vibing with the, the pink clouds in the sky. Yeah. <laughs>